Oops. Welcome. So here what we need to do is we need to find the solution uh, for 2a plus 3 equals 3 plus 2a. And you know, one thing we're looking at when we're trying to find the solution, a lot of times you know, we've always found, oh, well, we have one variable. You get your variable by itself. And you get you know, a, x, whatever equals this. It equals that value. But we got to remember, once we start including multiple variables, and especially when we include them on the opposite sides, um, we need to start looking for different opportunities where we might have infinite many solutions or no solution at all, which it is possible. And this is going to be an example of one. So remember, if I say like, you know, a equals five, that means when five, when the value of your variable is five, it makes your equation true. Now, if I look at this, we can solve this by using our regular methods, right? And I'll, I'll kind of do this a different way. So I'll do this twice. I'll say, say we have 2a plus 3 equals 3 plus 2a. Well, the main important thing we need to do, right, is get our variables on the same side. So I can either pick to get the variables on the left side or the right side. It doesn't really matter since they're both positive. All this maybe, let's say, I'll uh, eliminate the variable on the right side by subtracting 2a. Well, since I subtracted 2a on the right side, I need to subtract 2a on the left side. Well, what happens is you notice that both my 2a's go to 0, leaving me with 3 equals 3. So it's always equal, right? 3 always equals 3. Now, let's take a look at it the other way. 2a plus 3 equals 3 plus 2a. Let's say you just got rid of the threes. So you subtract threes on both sides. You get 2a equals 2a. Then you divide by 2. You get a equals a. Well, a is always going to equal a. Let's say a equaled 5. Well, then it would be 5 equals 5. If a equaled 10, it would be 10 equals 10. So it doesn't matter what value I plug in. It's always going to be true. That's why we say infinite, meaning it goes up to infinity many solutions. There's infinite many solutions. So the other way you can kind of look at this and realize how did you, you know, rather than doing all this work, how could I tell it's exactly the same? Well, you can just look at this by using the commutative property of addition. You can see that I can rearrange these and see that these equations are exactly the same. So no matter what my value of A is, whatever number I plug in for it, it's going to give me the exact value on the other side. Therefore, it doesn't matter what value I plug in. It does, um, I'm always going to get my equation to be true. So therefore, this is an infinite many solutions case. Thanks.